Hi, everyone. I've been dying for an opportunity to try out my new uh, audio setup with Udemy or some kind of video. So I thought I'd throw together this video about the cost, and I'm going to show you the equipment that I'm using to record my voice right now. Now, I'm pretty happy with my, where my voice is, and I'm beginning to do voiceover work. Well, that's not true. I'm doing voiceover auditions, auditions, and we'll talk about the results at the end. But what I wanted to talk about is the initial cost of getting into voiceover work and whether it's worth it. So let's uh, go through my equipment. Rather than doing an analysis of the equipment that's out there, I thought I would just show you what I'm using. I picked it because I thought it was the best, and I'm going to show you what I've got. Now, we're going to go through here in talking about what it takes to be a voiceover artist. And the first is your voice. The next is some audio equipment and then some audio recording and editing software. Next, you have to, or at least I am, doing a pay-for-play subscription where I get audio jobs forwarded my way but I have to pay to get them. And I'm gonna show you how that works. And finally, I wanna talk about some environmental considerations that you might want to consider before ever setting up your audio environment. So that's, those are the magic ingredients to doing voiceover work. And first, I'd like to begin with your voice, because this is the most exciting part. Your voice is free and any voice will do. So there are no special requirements. If you don't think you have a good voice, maybe you have a strange voice. A strange voice can actually make money. So don't eliminate this possibility of making money online just because you're not happy with your voice. Nobody's happy with their voice. I don't like listening to my voice when it's recorded either. The next thing I want to talk about is the audio equipment. This is where most of the expense is going to come up. And I'm going to show you all of the audio equipment that I've got to do recordings for both Udemy recordings and for voiceover work. First, it begins with my Blue Yeti microphone. This, I just think, is the workhorse of the recording industry. And it comes, in my case, when I bought it with a pair of JVC headphones. Tascoms are just fine. Get yourself some good headphones. I then added a newer microphone or a newer microphone arm, and a special Blue Radius 2 shock mount. This is a huge shock mount because the Blue Yeti is very large, and it needs a special shock mount. And then I just barely stuffed it, this whole apparatus, into a chaotic eyeball, which gives me a very silent, portable recording studio and I'm going to show you how all of this works. Let's begin by looking at it all together. Here you can see the newer arm coming in from the left. I didn't think it would be strong enough to hold all this stuff. It is and out from it comes the the blue radius 2 shock mount arm uh, holder for the microphone which is the blue yeti in the middle there and then on the the big ball on top is the sound suppression system called a chaotic eyeball. So let's begin by looking at the Blue Yeti microphone, which cost me $139 on Amazon, and it came with JVC headphones and actually a pop filter. But I ended up not using the pop filter because the chaotic eyeball that I'm gonna recommend has one built in. This is kind of the top of the line for blue microphones, and I like blue microphones. So I believe it's the best general purpose USB microphone available for the PC. And various people seem to agree. It's huge, by the way. It's a gigantic microphone. So that has its own problems. Now you can see it comes with this base where it, this is the way I used to use it. So I paid $139 and used it just the way you're seeing it now with a pop filter and sitting on the desk in front of me. I had to move the keyboard off to the side, which makes typing really awkward. And then I plug the headphones in. You can see there's a little headphone jack right in the microphone so you don't get any of the delay that Windows has uh, for processing your voice and everything works great. Now, this is the tube that you see below the big chaotic eye in the middle of this bungee-corded, weird, um, mechanical 
apparatus. The next thing I want to talk about is the newer microphone arm. It's only $12.50, so I didn't think it would be strong enough to hold all of this stuff, but it is, which is really surprising. If you really clamp down on the little thumb clamps, you can get it all to hold. Notice here it is going off to the left, kind of bent off, and it's holding this whole big shock mount, the microphone, and the Chaotica eyeball. So next I want to talk about what is this shock mount I keep talking about. Check this thing out. It's gigantic. And the way that it works is that your gigantic blue Yeti microphone screws onto the metal ring on that little plate you see in the middle. And so it's attached to this metal ring in the middle, which is attached to the outer ring by bungee cords, which actually attaches to your kneewer arm. So what it does is it... Via the bungee cords, it removes all vibration. And I've got a problem with vibration. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. But I found that this is a huge improvement to things. And you can see that's the thing that my a Blue Yeti is then ba balanced on with the final part, which is the Chaotica eyeball. Now, I was suspicious about this. I've tried... I've got a problem that my computer is right behind my microphone. I've got an all-in-one, so it's on my desk. What a poor choice. And I've got a window right to my left, which can let in some sound. I found that this Chaotica eyeball removes all sound. And here's what it looks like. It's just a big sponge ball with a pop filter popped into the front of it. So when you put it onto your microphone, it looks like a gigantic eye poised on top of the microphone. Now here's what's going on inside the eye. If I take off the pop filter, I can see my gigantic blue Yeti <laughs> microphone here waiting for sounds coming in. And the pop filter goes on front. That's why I don't need the pop filter that comes with my blue Yeti. And once again, this is what it looks like, the big foam Chaotica eyeball. Now, if I put all of this together, what that means is that the audio equipment to take just a basic PC and set it up for the kind of audio that I'm doing, doing a very high quality audio, is $404. That's relatively cheap when you consider everything. Now, I want to go on and talk about other expenses, though. Next, we're going to talk about audio recording and editing software. Here, I had the choice of going with Audacity, which is free. Every time I use Audacity, I get confused and frustrated. So I looked around, and I found that the easiest audio editing software to use out there was NCH WavePad. And I downloaded for 40 bucks a copy of it, and I like it. Now, I'd show you WavePad, but it looks pretty much like any other audio editing software, right? You have your wave sign in the middle and you go and you can drag and delete it and you can optimize it. You can clean it up, do all of these things. So I decided to pay the $40 for that. Most people would probably stick with Audacity, which is a free software program you can download onto, I believe, Mac or a PC and use it to edit your audio. Next, I want to talk about the pay per play pay for play subscription. What this means is that you pay these companies and they forward me audio recording auditions that I can, or jobs that I can audition for. So I get about six to 10 auditions a day during the week from a company called Voices.com. Now, I read a thing online that did a review between Voices.com and Voice123. And to me, Voices.com just wins down, hands down. For one thing, they're the ones who pay you. They take care of all the money transactions with the customers. You never invoice them. And then they put the money in an escrow account and they pay you out of that when the job is done. So they take care of everything for you. Voice123 just kind of links you up with the customer and then you have to invoice them. And if they don't pay, you have to deal with it. I'd much rather go with Voices. And Voices gives me a lot of work. Now, I also found that I got like a 30% off 
uh, discount on Voices.com, which is usually $399 per year. And that's what you're paying to get in and, and to have auditions directed your way. Now, it's $399 for Voice 1, 2, 3. So it's like, this was an easy decision with me. When I try out for the first time, which one am I going to go for? I'm going to go for the cheaper one that's getting better reviews. So I recommend Voices.com for $275 a year. The final thing I want to talk with you about is environmental considerations. Now, doors are great. Close the doors to get yourself a quiet place in which to work. And the other is computer preferences. Now, I've got an all-in-one computer where the fan and the disk drive are about six inches away from the back of my microphone. And that's one of the reasons I need to put this chaotic eye on this thing, is to block it from all of the noise coming from behind. The same thing happens with a laptop. So if you're using a laptop or an all-in-one, not a good choice. Now, I can block it. I'm telling you that in my case, this chaotic eyeball and the whole setup and the the shock mount and so on, is keeping all of the sound from going into my recording. You can hear it now. It should be fairly quiet. Now, there's other things that you can do, too. I've got a window right to my left, and there are places where you can buy soundproof windows to block them off for about $1,000. Or, as the other thing points out here, another $1,500 to get a computer that's a a floor model where you don't get your computer right behind it. So there's a lot of expensive options here that we've actually eliminated by using the Chaotica Eye. So there you go. If we put it all together now, your voice is free and any voice can do this. The audio equipment is about $400. I paid for some audio software, $40, and the pay-for-play subscription is $275. So you're talking about a little over $700 to get into voiceover work. And the results so far for me, I've reviewed 90 jobs. I've auditioned for 47 of them. 22 of my auditions have been viewed. One has been liked, and I have been awarded no jobs. <laughs> so far, I have made no money at voiceover work. So what's up next? The first job. I'm going to post again when I get my first voiceover job via, via Voices.com using the equipment I've described. I'll see you in that lecture and I'll be very excited. <laughs>